the great chain of being. Central to the perennial philosophy is the notion of the great chain of being. The idea itself is fairly simple. Reality, according to the perennial philosophy, is not one-dimensional. It is not a flat line of uniform substance stretching monotonously before the eye. Rather, reality is composed of several different but continuous dimensions. Manifest reality, that is, consists of different grades or levels, reaching from the lowest and most dense and least conscious to the highest and most subtle and most conscious. At one end of this continuum of being or spectrum of consciousness is what we in the West would call matter, or the insentient and the non-conscious, and at the other end of this is spirit or Godhead, or the superconscious, which is also said to be the all-pervading ground of the entire sequence. Arrayed in between are the other dimensions of being, arranged according to their individual degrees of reality. Plato, actually Aristotle, inclusiveness, Hegel, Consciousness, Aurobindo, Clarity, Leibniz, Embrace, Plotinus, and Knowingness, Garab Doge. Sometimes the great chain is presented as having just three major levels, matter, mind, and spirit. Other versions give five levels, matter, body, mind, soul, and spirit. Still others give very exhaustive breakdowns of the great chain. Some of the yogic systems give literally dozens of discrete yet continuous dimensions. For the time being, our simple hierarchy of the matter of to body, to mind, to soul, to spirit will suffice. The central claim of the perennial philosophy is that men and women can grow and develop or evolve all the way up the hierarchy to spirit itself, therein to realize a supreme identity with Godhead. The ends perfectissimum toward which all growth and evolution yearns. But before we get to that, the first thing that we can't help but notice is that the great chain is indeed a hierarchy, a word that has fallen on our very hard times, but as used by the perennial philosophy indeed, as used in modern psychology, evolutionary theory, and systems theory, a hierarchy is simply a ranking of orders of events according to their holistic Capacity. In any developmental sequence, what is whole at one stage becomes merely part of a larger whole at the next stage. A letter is part of a whole word, which is part of a whole se sentence, which is part of a whole paragraph, and so on. Author Kostler coined the term holon to refer to that which being a whole in one context is a part of a wider whole in another. With reference to the phrase the bark of a dog, for example, the word bark is a whole with reference to its individual letters, but a part with reference to the phrase itself. And the whole or the context can be determined, can determine the meaning and function of a part. The meaning of bark is different in the phrases the bark of a dog and the bark of a tree. 
the whole, in other words, is more than the sum of its parts. And that whole can influence and determine, in many cases, the function of its parts. Hierarchy, then, is simply an order of increasing holons, representing an increase in wholeness and integrative capacity. This is why hierarchy is so central to systems theory, the theory of wholeness or holism, holism, and it is absolutely central to the perennial philosophy. Each expanding link in the great chain of being represents an increase in unity and wider identities. From the isolated identity of the body through the social and communal identity of the mind to the supreme identity of the spirit. An identity with literal, literally, all manifestation. This is why the great hierarchy of being is often drawn as a series of concentric circles or spears or nests within nests. So the great chain is actually the great nest of being. And finally, hierarchy is asymmetrical or a hierarchy. Because the process does not occur in the reverse. For example, there are first letters, then words, then sentences, then paragraphs, but not vice versa. And that not vice versa constitutes an unavoidable hierarchy or ranking or a symmetrical order of increasing wholeness. As I said... All of the world's great wisdom traditions are basically variations of the perennial philosophy of the great holarchy of being. In this wonderful book, Forgotten Truth, Houston Smith summarizes the world's major religions in one phrase, a hierarchy of being and knowing. Chagyam Trungpa Rinpoche pointed out in Shambhala, the sacred path of the warrior, that the essential and background idea pervading all of the philosophies in the East, from India to Tibet to China, lying behind everything, from Shintoism to Taoism, is a hierarchy of earth, human, heaven, which he also pointed out is equivalent to body, mind, spirit. And Kuraswami noted that the world's great religions, bar none, in their different degrees of represent a hierarchy of types or levels of consciousness, extending from animal to deity, and according to which one and the same individual may function on different occasions. Which brings us to the most no notorious paradox in the perennial philosophy. We have seen the wisdom traditions subscribe to the notion that reality manifests in levels or dimensions, with each higher dimension being more inclusive and therefore closer to the absolute totality of Godhead. Or spirit. In this sense, spirit is the summit of being, the highest rung on the ladder of evolution. But it is also true that spirit is the wood out of which the entire ladder and all its rungs are made. Spirit is the suchness, the isness, the essence of each and everything that exists. The first aspect, the highest rung aspect, is the transcendental nature of spirit. It far surpasses any worldly or creaturely or finite things. The entire earth or even universe could be destroyed and spirit would remain. The second aspect, the wood aspect, 
is the eminent nature of spirit. Spirit is equally and totally present in all manifest things and events, in nature, in culture, in heaven, and on earth, with no partiality. From this angle, no phenomenon whatsoever is closer to spirit than another, for all are equally made of spirit. Thus, spirit is both the highest goal of all development and evolution and the ground of the entire sequence, as present fully at the beginning as at the end. Spirit is prior to this world, but not other to this world. Failure to take both of those paradoxical aspects of spirit into account has historically led to some very lopsided and politically dangerous views of spirit. Traditionally, the patriarchal religions have tended to overemphasize the transcendental nature of spirit, thus condemning earth, nature, body, and woman to an inferior status. Prior to that, the matriarchal religions tended to emphasize the eminent nature of spirit alone, and the resultant pantheistic worldview equated the finite and created earth with the infinite and uncreated spirit. You are free to identify with the finite and limited earth. You are not free to call it the infinite and unlimited. Both matriarchal and patriarchal religions, both of these lopsided views of spirit, have had rather horrible historical consequences, from brutal and large-scale human sacrifices for the fertility of the earth goddess to wholesale war, war for God the Father. But in the very midst of these outward distortions, the perennial philosophy, the esoteric or inner core of the wisdom religions, has always avoided any of those dualities, heaven or earth, masculine or feminine, infinite or finite, ascetic or celebratory, and centered instead on their union or integration, non-dualism. And indeed, this union of heaven and earth, masculine and feminine, infinite and finite, ascending and descending, wisdom and compassion, has made explicit in the tantric teachings of the various wisdom traditions from Neoplatonism in the West to Varajna in the East. And it is this non-dual core of the wisdom traditions to which the term perennial philosophy most applies. The point, then, is that if we are to try to think of the spirit in mental terms, which necessarily involves some difficulties, then at least we should remember this transcendent, eminent paradox. Paradox is simply the way non-duality looks in the mental level. Spirit itself is non-paradoxical. Strictly speaking, it is not characterizable at all. This applies doubly to hierarchy, or holarchy. We have said that when transcendental spirit manifests itself, it does so in stages or levels. The great holarchy of being. But I'm not saying spirit or reality itself is hierarchical. Absolute spirit or reality is not hierarchical. It is not qualifiable at all in mental terms, lower holon terms. It is shunyata or naguna or apophatic or unqualifiable without a trace of specific and limiting characteristics at all. But it manifests itself in steps and layers and dimensions, sheaths, levels or grades whatever term one prefers, and that is holarchy. In Vedanta, these are the koshas, the sheaths or layers covering Brahman. In Buddhism, these are the eight vijnanas, the eight levels of awareness, 
each of which is a stepped down or more restricted version of its senior dimension. In Kabbalah, these are the sefirot, and so on. The whole point is that these are levels of the manifest world of Maya. When Maya is not recognized as the play of the divine, then it is nothing but illusion. Hierarchy is illusion. There are several, there are levels of illusion, not levels of reality. But according to the traditions, it is exactly and only by understanding the hierarchical nature of samsara that we can in fact climb out of it. A ladder discarded only after having served is extraordinary purpose. Some postmodern critics have claimed that the very notion of the great chain, since his hierarchical, hierarchical is somehow oppressive, it is supposed to be based on unpleasant ranking instead of compassionate linking. But this is a rather unsophisticated complaint. First, the anti-hierarchical and anti-ranking critics are themselves engaged in hierarchical judgments of ranking. Namely, they claim their view is better than alternatives. In other words, they themselves have a very strong ranking system. It's just hidden and inarticulate and perfectly self-contradictory. Second, the great chain was actually what author Kosinger called a holaki, a series of concentric circles or nests with each senior level transcending, but including its juniors. This is a ranking to be sure, but a ranking of increasing inclusiveness and embrace, with each senior level including more and more of the world and its inhabitants, so that the upper or spiritual reaches of the spectrum of consciousness are absolutely all inclusive and all embracing, a type of radical, universal pluralism.